Hello everyone, uh, this is Nandeep from Myras and uh, today we'll be having a look at uh, the new product which has been released, Myras ANX. So this would be the flow of today's presentation. First of all, we'll have a look at uh, the basic introduction for Myras ANX, the overview, its modeling and machine capabilities, the analysis capabilities and the post-processing part. Then we'll directly compare Midas FEA NX with Midas FEA to see what the improvements are, the major improvements, then the pre and post processor improvements, and a uh, few analysis feature improvements. Then we'll address the question whether you need Midas FEA NX or uh, are the current packages okay for you. And finally, we'll be having a demonstration of the same. So let's jump in. So first of all, uh, the overview. So Midas FEA NX comprises of a geometry modeler uh, to model any kind of complex geometry, the mesh generators, uh, the FEM preprocessors for loading boundary conditions and so on, the FEM solvers, then the post processor to view the results, and finally the decode generator. Uh, these are the basic parts of any FE software. And uh, these are the analysis capabilities in general. You can go for static analysis, construction stage analysis, your reinforcement analysis, then buckling, eigenvalue, response spectrum, and your time history, whether it's linear or nonlinear. Then static contact analysis, interface nonlinearity, material and geometric nonlinear analysis, uh, as well as concrete crack analysis. Uh, finally, there is heat of hydration, heat transfer, and then few geotechnical analysis like slope stability. Uh, seepage consolidation and uh, coupled analysis. So this is the interface of new FEA NX. We have shifted from the context menu base to the ribbon menu. So at the top you have the main menu in form of ribbon. Then just below that you have quick access toolbar for your regular commands. Uh, below that you have the model window in which you can view multiple models at the same time. Then below that the message window where you can get all your uh, information if there is any error in command or your analysis messages. <clears throat> On the left towards the top we have the works tree and below that the property window. Uh, yeah, About the works tree, so there we have again three parts. One would be your modeling works tree, the analysis works tree and the results works tree. And for the property window, so you could select any property from the work tree and you could modify its properties in the property window. Uh, the biggest difference would be we have shifted uh, Midas FEA NX to a 64 bit platform, which is new generation. So it can handle large scale models quite efficiently. Uh, we have improved the Boolean features and obviously the mesh connection features and we have developed our own solver uh, so it can handle advanced analysis conditions now coming to the basics in each part so first we'll have a look at the modeling and meshing capabilities so it can directly import geometries from various available tools already like uh, autocad parasolid acis that IG is SOLIDWORKS, UniGraphics, and many more. You can also export geometry to a Parasolid or STL file. And you could import the models from existing structural packages like Gen uh, or Civil. And from a 3D model which you have generated over here, you could export a 2D model to another package like SOLIDWORKS. Moreover, uh, you can very quickly generate the model in uh, Midas FEA NX if you already have, uh, say, a line model in Midas Gen or Midas Silk. So we have an option to export the frame model to solid or plate. Uh, so that single line model would be coming as a 3D model in Midas FEA NX, and you could mesh it over here and just uh, directly have a look at the results. So this was all for the quick modeling. 
uh, in case you want to generate the model directly over there, then obviously we have many features like generating your polylines, arcs, and so on. You could import from DXF, as we said, and you could uh, connect. So if you are having any balanced cantilever bridge and your section profiles are varying, then that kind of thing can be connected over here by loft. Then from curves to the plane face uh, is possible. Uh, as for solids, so we have basic things like trim and divide and uh, Boolean operations like fuse, cut and embed. And as you can see from our vertex cloud, you could also generate the surface patch. Then another generation features would be your revolve. So in case you are having a pipe or a silo construction, you could just generate a 1D profile which you could revolve to obtain your 3D model. Similarly, we have the sweep feature, the lock feature as I mentioned before. So your changing profiles could be covered. Uh, then basic trim operations and offset. So any kind of complex shape could be offset to generate the required thickness. Uh, chamfer and fillet and uh, the fuse option as described before. Now coming to the mesh part. So one model can have multiple types of element uh, like uh, your 2D quad mesh or 3D hexa mesh or tetrahedral mesh as well as uh, 1D mesh and all of these would be connected directly. Uh, moreover, uh, as we said, we can import from uh, multiple CAD softwares, right? So if you have a complex shape, complex line geometry in a DXF file, that could be directly imported over here and uh, no need to create the surfaces directly from the lines, the uh, surface mesh could be obtained. So the tetra measure that is implemented in FEA NX, it generates tetrahedral solids of variable size in smooth transition at a rate of two lakh tetras per minute. And it's capable of obviously including holes, holes or points that might be there on or in the solids. <clears throat> uh, you can go for 3D or 2D map mesh, as you can see various examples over here. Uh, you can also generate a hybrid mesh which would compose of hexa, pyramid and tetra elements as we all know hexa elements uh, tend to be more accurate near to boundaries. So that can be covered over here. The mesh that you generate, so you can uh, seed the mesh so that there will be a fine transition from uh, your fine mesh to the coarse mesh region. The same thing could be done with mapped mesh as well. Now until now we were talking about uh, directly meshing a geometry but if you have meshed a geometry and you want to create a 3d mesh from that then that can also be done uh, 2d uh, 1d line mesh could be extruded into a 3d mesh uh, similarly your 2d meshed faces could be filled or extruded a 2d mesh could be extruded along any path or it could be revolved to finally obtain your 3d mesh Then another thing that we have to deal in generally with structural modeling is the reinforcement. So the reinforcement could be modeled in two ways over here. It could uh, either be embedded into existing mesh. So it need not have any common nodes with the mesh, but uh, uh, it can uh, be directly uh, connected to the nearby nodes. So that would be an embedded element. Alternatively, you can create a compatible mesh, which would be a bit time consuming process such that there are common nodes between your reinforcement and your solids. Now coming to the next part, which is analysis. So FEA NX could handle your simple linear static analysis. Uh, well, a part could be, as I said before, part could be line elements and part could be plate or solid elements. Uh, it can do eigenvalue analysis, your vibration or buckling analysis. Then obviously dynamic analysis, it could be periodic or transient time history, linear or non-linear. And the software has inbuilt database for 54 or 2 spectrums. Uh, you can also do code based response spectrum analysis over here and uh, geometric and material nonlinear analysis uh, nonlinear analysis including hardening and softening behaviors 
and methods include uh, full Newton Raphson, modified Newton Raphson, Ireland initial stiffness of Cosy Newton method. Uh, the material models would be one Mrs. Tresca, Murkulam, Dr. Pagar, or Rankine, Hope Brown. So, Rankine, Hope Brown, all these are mainly our soil based models. And for concrete, we have a concrete smeared crack model and the masonry model. And you can also give your own user defined material model for analysis. It also supports uh, interface nonlinear analysis when the interface could have different properties like column friction, viscid cracking, pulse slip, and so on. Heat transfer and heat of hydration analysis could also be done over here. Uh, then we have contact analysis where you can define different properties for your contact. And as I said before, concrete cracking, so it could be smeared or discrete cracking, and you'll be getting output for crack status, plasticity, uh, contact or slip, and the crack width. And then there are various geotechnical analysis, uh, including slope stability, seepage, uh, stress seepage, couple analysis, uh, consolidation, and construction stage analysis for soil as well. Now coming to the post-processing part. So it's quite flexible. You can uh, modify the legends. You could. Uh, control what each contour in the legend would represent, uh, its spawn, magnification, and so on. You can obtain medical plots, graph charts, tables, deformed and undeformed shapes, uh, any localized plots, contours, isoplots, clipping planes, uh, history of uh, history plot long as the time varies, so how is the plot varying that could be checked, uh, results which are compatible with uh, Excel. You could probe at any point in the model uh, you could get extraction uh, results for your construction stage and time stream analysis extracted in form of steps or stages and uh, screenshots for your manually generating the report could be directly taken up. So this is how few of those plots look your contour plot, the vector plot, uh, isosurface plots and uh, your clipped plot with the diagram so you can obtain uh, the variation in the values along any particular line in any plot and you could probe the result at various locations in the plots and as for documentation you can get summary of the analysis results charts a 3d pdf could be taken up which could be shared for uh, viewing with the clients and uh, as i said before excel compatible tables uh, then in the post-processing part, when it comes to buckling analysis, we know that imperfections need to be taken up in the model for further non-linear analysis in many situations. So you could do your linear buckling analysis and any particular mode could be exported and uh, directly applied in the model to update the geometry where further uh, geometric non-linear analysis could be performed. Now, <clears throat> coming to the overview, FEA versus FEA NX. So these were the general problems that we had faced so far. Uh, it uh, had a 32-bit uh, processor and it was a very old GUI. So it had certain issues and client used to complain like model is too big and analysis is not converging. And it had low computing power. So if there are certain complex geometries, uh, FEA used to have problem in uh, Boolean operations for such solids that would generate failed shapes and so on, which can't be further used for analysis. So you would have to follow a specific set of paths to generate the required solid. And uh, certain features we weren't able to add as uh, our solver was shared, but now we have developed our own solver. So with that, we come to FEA NX, uh, which has support for 62-bit solver and uh, graphic engine support for large models. So those could be easily handled. And uh, we have adopted a parasolid color. So as I said, the Boolean operations and all are now quite streamlined. And the new solver has been fully developed by Midas. And uh, advanced features which could be of use even for modeling uh, small structural parts like your anchorage and so on, the mechanical parts could be done very well. And the new platform is 
easy for deploying advanced analysis. So coming to the major feature differences that we have right now in FEA as compared to FEA NX. So FEA NX has a few geometric tweaks which makes the modeling much easy like auto connect. Uh, so medical solids could be automatically connected to one another. Uh, then there is terrain geometry maker. So in case you have a very terrain profile which you want to use in the model and you have a terrain geometry maker and tunnel section in case you have a tunnel. Then for mesh, we have in FEA NX hybrid mesh. Uh, as I said, it comprises of your hexa elements, pyramid, and tetra. So it gives a good result. And you can also divide the mesh by a surface now. As for properties, uh, different properties like geo grid, uh, getting shell, uh, shell interface, pile, pile tip, uh, free field. So all of these different kinds of properties have also been introduced in FEA NX. Uh, then one such property, reinforcement grid, it was there in FEA, but it's not available in uh, FEA NX. So reinforcement grid was an approximate way of setting up the reinforcement, so which has now been removed uh, since the actual reinforcement could be defined quite easily in FEA NX. Then various material models like smeared, cracked, masonry, generalized rope ground, softening, soil, and modified cam clay, and so on have been added over here. One of the material model, which is total strain crack, which we used in minus FEA is not available. Instead, we have the smeared crack material model. Uh, similarly, since we have introduced a lot of soil related features, so we have introduced soil boundary conditions like water level, slip surface, nodal height, and so on. Uh, train dynamic load table has been added in FEA NX. For contact, we have added medical options like bidirectional siding, uh, rough breaking bed, thermal conductance, and as I said, auto contact. <coughs> for construction stage, we have multiple stage wizards available. As for analysis, fatigue, moving route, and CFD analysis are still being developed for MIDAS FEA NX, which are currently available in FEA. Uh, but several analysis like non-linear time history analysis. Uh, Stoke stability seepage and couple geometric nonlinear analysis as well as parametric analysis is now available in FEA NX, which was not there in FEA. And it has various tools like uh, tunnel modeling wizard or dynamic load data generator, seismic data generator, or artificial earthquake generator, as well as the 3D report maker. So these were the major differences. Coming to the handling of large scale models, so it can now easily handle models which are having multiple solids, like as you can see. So there is a 526 solid model and a model with 3250 solids and 700 construction stages. So the 64 bit platform uh, and improvement in function through graphics engine help a lot in handling such models. We have also introduced a uh, bisection model. So, as we know in any nonlinear analysis, the size of the step and the number of steps matter a lot in achieving the convergence. So, in FEA, what used to happen was if you are giving the step size too large, then the model might diverge. But in FEA NX, we have introduced a bisection method wherein if such a condition is met and the analysis could be diverging, then it would automatically. Uh, update the stiffness metrics to ensure the convergence. Obviously, giving the smaller steps to begin with is uh, always recommended, but in case uh, we miss out and we still want to have convergence to get an idea of the results, then uh, that can be done in MIDAS FEA NX. Now, coming to the differences in the pre and post processors. So as I mentioned, we are moving on from the context uh, menu to the ribbon-based menu, which is more intuitive. And intuitive functions uh, with instructional guide images. So as you can see, <coughs> similar functions uh, have been put under the same tab. And for each tab, we have a guide view. So for example, if you're using the fuse option, and what does the merge faces mean? So if the merge faces option is on, in case you have three solids, the final merged solid would look like this. In case this merge face option is off, it will create a merged solid which would have the internal faces uh, as well. 
Similarly, the model that we have generated, the context menu are task sensitive. So if you are right clicking on any solid, it will ask you what you want to do, whether you want to generate the mesh, you want to modify the boundary condition or the load condition. So you could directly apply the loads. And once you have applied the load and you right click, so there is an option to hide it or edit it or delete it. So it has become more intuitive. Uh, then the improvement in Boolean operation. So here we are comparing a couple of examples. So first one being uh, uh, two solid and five faces. We are trying to divide. So with Midas FEA, uh, the generation in this case it had failed and it took 39 seconds to report it. But on the same uh, system with Midas FEA NX. Uh, the same geometry generation was completed successfully in 22 seconds. Another example with 29 solids and a shell. So in FEA, it had failed after taking up 20 seconds. Whereas in FEA NX, it was completed in just 5 seconds. And similarly, in another example with one solid and 9 faces, it was done successfully in FEA, but it took 1 minute 29 seconds, whereas it was completed in less than 1 second in FEA NX. So that's all thanks to the 64-bit processor and uh, the graphic engine. Similarly for meshing, uh, so we have two models, one with 64 solid and another with 307 solids. So, <coughs> so the 64 solid model, it took 326 second in FEA, whereas the same was done in under a minute in FEA NX. Uh, and uh, in another solid, the 307 solid. Again, it took one minute in FEA, whereas it was done in under 10 seconds in FEA NX. So in this case, there was a 90% reduction. But overall, when you are using tetrahedral automesh, the time is generally reduced by at least 80%. Then this is another feature, the auto connect feature. So when we are generating multiple solids, and when we are dividing them, so in that situation, or we are just placing them, so in that situation, we can use this auto connect feature to generate the co faces between them, and this ensures the connectivity in the solid. So it's easy enough for beginners to avoid any modeling errors. Uh, definition of uh, multiple construction stages could now be auto generated. So you have different types of construction stage scenarios, which could be stress based, seepage based, or so on. So you could just select the stage type, go to define auto stages, and the software will automatically generate the construction stages, which could then be checked by the user. For post-processor improvement, uh, the overall uh, analysis speed has improved, uh, analysis and uh, the result viewing speed. So if you are generating a contour for a practical test model, uh, what used to take 20.5 seconds in FEA is happening in 1.1 second in FEA NX. Uh, 3D PDF report could be generated, as I mentioned before. Uh, 3D flow lines could be seen for seepage analysis and improvement in result computation. So multiple different types of element results could be viewed simultaneously or beam and solid results could be viewed simultaneously. Then coming to the analysis feature. So with FEA NX, we have introduced the hierarchy mesh and the bonded contacts. So uh, let's directly have a look at uh, the example. In this case, we have used the model with contact. So the meshes are not compatible, but we have connected them uh, using the contact option. And in another situation, we have been careful and coincident nodes have been generated, meaning there are common nodes between different mesh sets. And when we perform the analysis, the difference in results was less than uh, 1%. Another such model. Uh, so in one situation, we had used hybrid elements. So the number of elements was 
uh, around 35,000, number of nodes was around 32,600. If instead of hybrid element plus contact, we go for coincident node model, then the number of nodes are still 32,476, which is comparable to the hybrid mesh, but the number of elements are very high. It's almost six times the number of elements in the uh, as compared to the hybrid element model. And the difference in result was just 0.34%. So as you can see, the number of elements are drastically reduced when we use the hybrid element and uh, the contact. Another thing would be in Midas FEA, we only had linear dynamic analysis, but when it comes to dealing with soils, it's always preferable to go for non-linear analysis. So when we use a non-linear analysis, it will be giving a more realistic behavior for soil structure interaction and the evaluation of embankment and the dynamic loading, your crash loads and so on. Okay. And as I said, soil deformation is mostly plastic, so nonlinear analysis gives a more realistic result. So that was it for feature comparison between FEA and FEA NX. Now the next question, do you actually need MIDAS FEA NX? So let's answer that question by a series of few other questions. So are you in dealing with just simple structures like culverts or slab bridges or conventional composite bridges and so on. If the answer to that is yes, then uh, no, probably you don't need uh, the FEA NX. Do you take up consultancy for irregular or unique structures? So if the answer to that is yes, then yeah, most probably you might need uh, FEA NX depending on the complexity of uh, the structure being handled. Do you want to further optimize the structure and ensure safety? Yes, if you want to go for higher optimization and you want to ensure that things are still safe, then yes, definitely you need solid modeling and definitely you need uh, FEA NX. Do you take up consultancy for retrofitting? So retrofitting is a situation where you know already your existing structure is not safely carrying the capacity. So how it has behaved so far and how would your improvements handle? So for that kind of situation, yes, you need to go for FEA NX and the solid analysis. And are you into investigative structural engineering? So sometimes problems have been reported or there are certain questions raised about the design. So in that situation, to justify your design or to check why the faults are happening, you need to go for 3D detailed analysis. And again, in that case, you will definitely need Midas FEA NX. So let's have a look at all of these with uh, few of the examples. So as I mentioned, the first thing was irregular structure. So if you have a structural model, which is highly irregular, like the one shown over here, and at one node, six or seven different steel beams are coming up. So yes, uh, for a structural engineer to model a global thing and connect six to seven beams at one node, it's a common thing. But practically, whether that is possible or not, if you need to check it. So how can you do that? So if you have its model in say Midas Gen or Midas Civil, the easiest thing would be to export that particular joint. So all the line elements at that joint could be exported along with its 3D geometry uh, as a DXF file. Uh, if required, you could make the modification in the DXF or you could bring it to Midas FEA NX. You could mesh your solid over there and you could export it back to uh, similar gen for further analysis. So that's what was done over here. The line model was exported to CAD, then to FEA, wherein the smashing was done and it was taken back to uh, gen or civil. The advantage over here would be, obviously the analysis could be done in FEA NX itself, but then you have to define multiple cases. And in this situation, actually, you don't have any pre-stressing or anything. As we know, there's a limitation that you can't apply pre-stressing to solids in uh, civil. So that can be handled. So the mesh could be taken back at the exact location in civil origin and further analysis could be done there. In this situation, actually, you don't need the solver or the post-processor of FEA NX. So there is a tool known as NX Plus, which is mainly for modeling. So even that would serve the purpose over here. Then another thing is structural optimization. Uh, as we know, in most of the situations, we go for a line model and it is ideal for longitudinal design and it's very quick in analysis. It serves most of the purpose. But in case you have some structure like this with uh, 
white uh, deck and flanges. So in that situation, it won't be recommended to just model a uh, longitudinal line model. So another model would be required for transverse analysis. And if you are generating a line model for transverse analysis, then it generally gives very conservative results. Uh, moreover, the lateral and longitudinal effects of stressing would have to be combined manually later in the post-processing. So the answer to that would be a plate model. Well, a partial answer to that. So it captures the longitudinal and transverse effects with sufficient accuracy. It's relatively slow, but it's not that slow. It could be used for uh, analysis. The cons here would be you will have to create dummy element to transfer your forces to the plates. And the stiffness of these dummy elements would highly govern what force is being transferred to the plate. So a bit of approximation would come in there. Uh, as for the complete cross-section shape, it would have to be approximated with average plate thickness. So, as you can see, uh, there are certain tapered parts over here, which have been replaced by plates of average thickness. So that kind of thing would have to be done for a plate model in general civil. And uh, obviously, uh, it does not support pre-stress design in the software. This brings us to the third part, which is solid model. Now, again, uh, as I said, pre-stressing could be applied only to line elements in civil. So when we are coming to solid model, yes, civil can handle it, but FE would be uh, obviously a better choice. So the pros here would be if you have a civil line model, it's very quick to generate the 3D model in uh, FE NX. Solid model is obviously the most accurate structural representation. Single model can be used for all different types of analysis that you want to perform. No need for dummy elements over here. Uh, you could accurately transfer your pieces to DEX. Uh, and if required, nonlinear analysis, crack propagation analysis, and so on could be directly performed over here. Even the localized stress checks for your pre stress or any other concentrated load could be done in the solid model. On curve diagrams could be obtained and soil structure interaction could be done over here. So, as we are talking about structural optimization, if we are accurately modeling the substructure behavior, then it will obviously give us more uh, realistic uh, picture of the complete structure. Uh, now, coming to the cons. Uh, so, the big con for a solid model would be the traditional modeling generation could be time consuming. But since FEA has an interface and interchange option with CAD or civil and gen, so the modeling could be done very quickly. For a solid model, yes, beginner can make simple modeling mistakes, but then we have auto connect and auto contact to easily resolve these issues. Time consuming analysis, yes, solid analysis would be time consuming, but with a 64 bit solver, uh, the speed is very much improved. So the only con remaining uh, really would be that the software based structural design uh, cannot be obtained based on, uh, you know, code recommendations. So that would be one limitation which would stay. Then are you into retrofitting consultancy? So yes, sometimes cracks might be reported at site. So to realistically model that with the actual loading scenario, the reinforcements and so on, so that kind of model could be generated in Midas FEA and you could obtain your actual stresses with, uh, you know, nonlinear load distribution and so on. And you could uh, obviously check the strains and stresses in the reinforcement as well. So that gives an idea whether the structure is still usable, could it be retrofitted or worst situation, it needs to be dismantled and uh, redone. So that could be checked with such 3D analysis. Another such situation uh, would be sometimes the line global line model will not be able to give you a clear picture. You might because as we know, when we make a line model, uh, it has uh, many assumptions of an engineer, like how plane section remains plane and how it's rigid. But that might not be uh, true. So in this case, actually, uh, as you can see, uh, just a second. So in this uh, scenario, what has happened is the blisters are actually quite close. So that's why cracks had developed in the webs. But as you can see, in the global model, generally we check the stresses at the extreme points and those points are not giving the worst stresses, but the stresses are worse in the web due to uh, close proximity of the blister. So this effect can't be captured in 
a global model. So if you are into investigative engineering, yes, you need to go for uh, 3D model and you need to go for nonlinear analysis. Okay, so coming to the next part, the demonstration. So this is how the general interface of FANX looks. Uh, as soon as you start a new file, uh, you have to select what kind of analysis it is, the gravity direction, the units, and so on. Obviously, you can change the units from the bottom of the screen over here as well. And in this case, we are basically going to take up uh, uh, this particular modeling. So let's proceed with that. Uh, but before I get into that, I'll just give a general introduction of the interface. So your geometry related commands for points and curves, surface and solids, your Boolean operations, and uh, your merge divide operations, extrude. So all of those could be, uh, you know, viewed over here your tenant geometry maker or the frame to solid or frame to shell element. So these are the things from where you can import the line model as a solid in uh, FEANX. Then you have various meshing options. So you can give the properties, the uh, composite or complex section properties could be checked. Uh, you could control your seeding, what kind of mesh you wish to generate, if you wish to modify the name or you know, stuff like that for your meshes refute, sweep, and all the options that we talked about, the transform, and different kinds of elements. So the new things here would be your file free field, uh, infinite, see page cutoff. So these are different kinds of elements which you can give over here, and your basic query operations, then different types of static analysis. So the material and all those things remain here as well. For uh, your boundaries, you can define the set, what kind of boundary it is. You can give different types of static loads, uh, thermal loads, you could set your construction stages, specific wizard for tunnel modeling over here. The dynamic analysis options could be under, uh, referred under the dynamic analysis tab. Again, the cases define the load sets for the dynamic analysis, tools like uh, seismic data generator, dynamic load generator, artificial earthquake. Then specific set for geotechnical analysis. And the different boundaries that we saw the nodal head, the water level, uh, and slip surface, and so on. And the different loads for uh, geotechnical data. Again, the state setup for geotechnical analysis. And then your analysis setup. So, general settings like what kind of analysis you want to set up over here, you could select. So nonlinear static, nonlinear time history, nonlinear analysis with strength reduction methods, all of those could be uh, set up individually. And then uh, the results we'll check in later. Right now, let us have a look at the tools options. So under tools, uh, your basic things like uh, uh, you know setting up the geometric color or tiling the windows, export 3D PDF, light simulation, and uh, so on. So let us start with the modeling. So I will first of all change my work plane to the XY plane. So I'll click on this option, which is to move the work plane and I'll select the plane as XY plane. And okay. So as you can see, my work plane has shifted. Uh, now I can set up the grid size if required, like 20 meter grid size and say, 30 parts, so I'll just write it. 30. Okay. Right, so the grid size is set. Now uh, let us start generating the curves. So I'll be using the arc option to generate a small arc, a semicircle right now. So I'll click on R and I can select whether I want a 2D or a 3D arc. So when I select 2D and this particular method, so that would mean, first of all, I have to input the center location, which would be 0, 0. Apply. The start location would be, say, 1 meter uh, long by. So enter 0, 1. And end location would be 0, minus 1. Apply. And so I can see my curve, which would have been generated in the geometry. The curve has been generated. 
So to see the curve, I could simply click on this one. It just zooms into all part. So this is a curve which is generated. If I want to measure the distance, I can click on measure and I can click on the first point and the second point. So as expected, the distance is uh, two meters. Okay, so that was my curve. Similarly, now I will generate a profile which would be consisting of a polyline as well as a curve part. So I'll click on profile. I'll click on the very first point, which is over here. And first of all, I'll generate a line. So I'll go here, minus one comma zero, so one meter back, apply. Now I want to change it to an arc. So I'll click on this option, which is for tangential arc. So I'll click on the tangential arc and I'll input the next point of the arc. Uh, or which is given by radius and the angle method. So the radius is one meter and the angle is 180 degrees since I want to create a semicircle. And then I'll give the end location, which is one meter from here. Apply. Oh, sorry. So I will have to change this to polyline and I say one meter and apply. And that's it. Okay. So uh, my curve is created. Uh, now what I'll do is I'll move this curve up by uh, one meter. So I'll just select these three. And from here, I will go to transform and use the translate option. So I've already selected these three. Select the direction, which would be this direction. And I'll be moving my curves by one meter in upper direction. And okay, so the curves have moved. Now uh, I'll create an arc connecting the center of the bottom uh, arc to the center of the top arc. So for that, again, I'll go to the arc option, but now I'll use the 3D option instead of 2D. And the arc center location would be. Uh, minus two. So I'll give this as minus two. Apply and the first or the start location would be minus one. Apply and the end location would be minus two comma zero comma one. So minus two comma zero comma one. And I say apply. So the arc is generated. <clears throat> so this kind of shape is generated right now now what i'll do is uh, i'll just intersect because right now this is a complete arc what i'm going to do is i'll generate the surface for one fourth of this shape and then we'll use other features like extrude to generate our geometry so i'll just select all by clicking here and i'll click on this button which is for intersect so select curves again, I just select all and okay. So now my curves have been divided and I'll create one more line. So for that, I'll use this feature, create line 3D and the cursor. So these are your various snapping options. You can see grid snap, perpendicular snap and so on. So you could select appropriate snapping. In this case, it's already on. So I just click on the first node and the second node. So I've created this line. Now I'll go to the make face option. So over here, I'll select the edges. And I hit apply. So my face is generated. I'll just hide the space for now. So in FEA NX, you could simply, you know, do it by unchecking over here and it's hidden. Now another thing is we'll be generating the upward one meter geometry by using the extrude feature. So I will click on extrude and select the objects. Uh, so I want to select an edge. So I'll select edge over here, one and two, and select direction, upward, length of one meter, and apply. So that is the upper face. And similarly, I generate the lower part of the pier. So 
Select target here. Again, this is become face. I put edge and direction Z. I need to reverse the direction five meter because it would be going five meter on the downward side. And I hit apply, and this is done. So now I can see all my faces. Let's go to the isometric view. And now I will use the mirror feature. So I click on mirror over here and I'll select the objects. So one, two, three, and four. And I'll select the plane for mirroring. So that would be my XZ plane. I want to copy the objects. So apply. So far it is done. And then I'll again select the remaining faces which have been generated. So that's total eight, and I'll select the plane as X uh, Y Z plane, and apply. So that's the complete uh, face geometry, and now I'll generate the top and bottom faces. So I'll come to the front view, and I'll go to the Make Face option, select edges, just select the top edge, apply, and bottom edge. Okay, so that's it. The complete 3D geometry is ready as a face. So now we'll make the solid geometry out of these faces. So we'll click on surface. We'll use the C option, the C Boolean option. And I want to make solid out of this. So I'll say make solid, select surfaces. So I've selected everything and I hit OK. So a new solid is generated and default name it has given as face which was my first thing so I'll just change this to peer from the property window. Okay so that's the generated solid. Now we'll go to the meshing so mesh and we'll use this option to mesh the 3D geometry and I'll select the object give the size as 0.3 and use the default tetra measure and i have not defined the properties right now if i want i can directly click over here and add the properties but i'll show the other location from where you can define it so from here you can directly add it instead we'll do it later just give the mesh set name as peer okay oh sorry so I'll just select the object again and i say apply so the mesh is ready just like that and now uh, we'll give the properties to it so first of all the material property so i'll create an isotropic property give it the name set punk and elasticity is 5000 poison's ratio is 0.2 and the unit weight is 5 km per cubic meter uh, this is fine okay and then uh, if i wish to create any other property then that could be done from over here but right now what we want is we want to modify the property which we have just created so we can check it and you know if you have already defined anything then those things could be checked over here right now if you want to modify then you can see you have one undefined property so you can right click on it hit define and uh, you already defined the material component and 3d property so you can just hit okay and it has shifted to the 3d part okay so we have defined the property now let us go to the loading so we go to static analysis and we go to constraint so you can go to the front view and for the bottom i want to give pin condition so i can directly click on paint or i can go to advance uh, i could select the nodes and boundary conditions and put the name say dc okay so your boundaries have been defined similarly i can give load so for self weight i could simply click on self weight uh your name say gravity similarly give a load set name so as you can see we have not already defined these but uh, when you enter the values or the names over here the load sets are automatically defined so I define a gravity load set. So that's an indication for self-weight. 
And now let's uh, apply arbitrary pressure. So I'll click on pressure. Apply pressure on 3D element faces. Select the objects. And apply a pressure of say 5 kilonewton per meter square. And I want to change the load set, load set name. Okay. okay. So basically we have defined the loads and the boundaries. So under analysis, I can right click on the analysis case and click add. Or uh, the same thing could be done by going to the analysis and clicking on the general. So I will create a linear static analysis case, say linear, and I'll select all my boundaries and loads. So I can just double click over here, click OK. And that's it. Let's just save this file. Save. And let us perform the analysis. So we just want to perform the linear analysis. And let us see how long it takes. So that's it, total time was around 22 seconds. And it has used, you can see all the other things around like what was the maximum available size, the number of threads used, and all those details. Okay, the total number of elements was 5,200. Okay, so the analysis is done, and you want to check out any results, you could go to results, linear static, displacements. If you want to see total translations, you can just double click and you can view your translations, you change the units and automatically uh, the values in the legends would be updated. Okay. Uh, then as we ta talked about, we have, uh, you know, the 3D PDF option and all those things. You could probe the results, you could just click on probe and you could select any particular location. So what is the value there? You can check it. Okay. So these are the various result viewing options. And finally, if you go to tools and you say export 3D PDF, uh, let us just export it for the total translation right now. And for two, for example, and okay. Just hit okay and it will generate a 3D PDF. In case you get this, you just go to options and trust this document. So once you do that, it will sort of internally reopen the document and now we will be able to view uh, the 3D PDF. So the PDF itself, you can uh, modify it, you can change the views and you could check the results. So it's basically a nicer way of uh, representing the analysis and sharing it with any of your prospective clients for checking it out. Okay, so that's it for today's session. Uh, we'll be taking up any questions and if you have any more questions which couldn't be addressed right now, uh, you could always get in touch with us on globalsupport.madassuser.com. Thank you.